Hello to both of you. I'm Peter Saber. And let me say this. The Sand, a game from 1995, was my first game ever. I was a little kid. I'd break into an office a floor below mine and play The Sand with a friend. Later The Sand 2 came along. And my very first computer was bundled with The Sand 3. Basically, those games were my gaming childhood. So obviously, when I heard about Retrovirus, which is in a way a spiritual successor to Descent, I immediately became interested. But what's so special here? Well, Retrovirus is a game created by Cadenza Interactive, and it is what we call a 6-axis shooter, or a 360-degree freedom shooter. That means you can move in any direction, at any angle, while completely ignoring that bitch called gravity. The game features a 6 to 7 hours long single player campaign, some challenges and a multiplayer mode. I'll focus on the gameplay and the single player. However, let me warn you of two things. First of all, I was starved for the Descent game for so long, so there will be a lot of referencing Descent and comparing Retrovirus to it. And second of all, I suck in this gameplay video. Try playing at the half of the normal frame rate. But more about that later. Ok, so let's start off with the options menu. In graphics options, you can choose which graphics card will run the game on which screen, which is a cool idea. And there are a number of various resolutions available, as well as a windowed mode. But that doesn't work all that well. I wanted to play in a window in 1600 by 900 resolution, but you have to size it yourself. Then there is uh, sampling, vsync, buffered frames, FXAA and low or high lightning details. A brightness slider and thank you god, an FOV slider with numbers on it. Well, and you can also turn hood on and off. I like how there's a frame rate count and the GPU load to the right, however the latter is not very accurate. A lot of things are missing here. I like a much more detailed options menu, especially with stuff that uses shaders and special effects. When I turn lightning details to low, my frame rate doubles and hits 100, a number the game is apparently capped at. I wish there was a way to pick and choose and some middle grounds option, not just low and high. Medium is a very good idea as well. The FOV slider is a great addition, but ultimately this menu is severely lacking. Audio options are good, separate sliders for effects, music, voice, and something cool, but for an unknown reason rare. A way to turn down effects while someone is talking. There is no option to turn off subtitles, however. And the problem here is that subtitles usually don't match what you hear. A character will say one thing and you will read something completely different. That's not impressive at all. Ok, here things pick up. All kinds of customization and sliders here. And by the way, turn off roll correction, I just couldn't play with that shit on. In this game, you will roll around very often, to the point where you will have no idea where the floor is, like 5 minutes in. But the next stop is great. Every control key can be easily rebound. Click the plus button to add a binding and click the binding to delete it. They are all color coded so they don't melt together. Pretty nice stuff, it should be in every game. And last but not least, a couple of 3D options. And check this out, Retrovirus supports Oculus Rift. Fuck yeah! And besides that, some technical stuff. Finally, a shooter in which you can quick save. And it will properly quick save and not just get you back to a checkpoint after you load. The only problem is that the quick load loads the latest save and not the latest quick save. Oh, and there is a full support for modding. We were given a complete modding tool and various mods are already being developed. But only two are kind of ready right now. I have to say this right now. Retrovirus is not a Descent clone. But with that modding tool, apparently we can transform it into one. It also allows us to fix some issues the game has, but I'm not going to let them off the hook because someone else can fix the problems in a mod. And I will show you the tool, but I have no idea how it works yet, so maybe another time, if you want. Now, what is this all about? Basically, the story is the following. You are an agent of a computer antivirus program. 
A worm is detected and you are sent to deal with the situation. You end up traveling from desktop to other software pieces, like the browser and the control panel, trying to obtain a way to destroy the worm and finally do it. Quite an unusual concept, and it is quite a difficult one to pull off. And let me tell you, they pulled it off. The aesthetic is great, it really made me think it was some sort of a Ubuntu Windows hybrid. The entire thing is full of stuff you'd expect in a cyber science fiction inside of a futuristic operating system. There are a lot of simple but smooth shapes, cleverly combined together into complex structures, and there's a lot of lightning effects and holograms, tubes, semi-transparent objects, and everything put together gives a very colorful but at the same time very clean style. The attention to details is mind-blowing, at the same time it is made very clear that the entire thing is a utility-focused facility. There are tubes, pneumo system, construction yards, factories, iron pits, steelworks, etc, etc, etc. The entire thing, while created in this clean, colorful style, is clearly a huge combination of a postal office, army base, steelworks, research labs, and any kind of utility complex you can think of. There even are sewers! The great thing is that based on which program you currently are interfacing with, the game can be divided into specific chapters. And each chapter has its own distinct characteristics, while keeping the overall tone, which is amazing, it's very hard to do! And some of the areas are incredible! Clearly some very talented people have worked on this. I also like how each process is a drone guy that goes to work by a train. Anyway, long story short, this is Descent 3 that had a baby with Mirror's Edge and then it, the baby had a baby with Tron. Unfortunately, for some reason they decided to include characters and have programs talk in human speech. Most of them are just there, and you can uh, ignore them, but in my opinion this is a wasted effort. Ok, Kernel is kind of a badass, but everyone else is so forgettable, you will forget about them the moment you finish the, the levels. Except Cat. Listen to this annoying little piece of shit. Oracle! OMG, thank you so much for coming! Things are a complete mess. Cat, an attachment opened up in your program. Do you know where it is? Yes! The weird looking thing that was venting viral code in the outbound section. What is the fastest way there? The trains usually, but they are running haywire. You can follow the tracks as they are. It's sort of the fastest way. I just waited for this stupid girl to throw a hashtag YOLO, but it never happened, fortunately. Okay, most of the characters you can just ignore them, you are never forced to listen, and the only scripted event is at the very beginning of the game, when the worm appears. And what about sound and the music? They are both functional. There's not much to talk about here, it's just fine. Okay, some sounds are irritating, especially missile hits. But besides that, it's very... cyberish. That's the best way to put it, I think. The music is neat as well, but it doesn't ring in your ears after you qu quit playing. Okay, it's time to talk about graphics. Fortunately, graphics match the aesthetic. They are clean, but details on literally everything is superb. Textures are of very high resolution, and lightning effects as well as shadow effects are impressive. Frequent use of glass and semi-transparent objects made the game look even cooler and all that combined with various auras and filters and makes the game a fist for an eye, especially considering what their budget was. However, what we see on the screen is often too colorful and it becomes hard to simply see shit. Also, there's an overabundance of special effects and screen effects, which becomes sometimes ir irritating. And the biggest elephant in the room is performance. Retrovirus tanks my graphics card. It's not a weak one, it's 460 GTX overclocked by Gigabyte, the strongest of its generation, but when recording I averaged at 20 FPS at the 1600x900 resolution. 
Even Crisis 3 and Far Cry 3 on highest settings and full HD resolution had much higher frame rate while recording. Better graphics option would have solved the problem somewhat, but the game calls for better optimization. It does look impressive, but not enough to justify its performance. Still, the graphics are a strong point of the title. Ok, now for the most important part. Gameplay. If you came expecting a descent speed gameplay, you will be kind of disappointed. Retrovirus is half that speed, very floaty at that. And numerous aspects of gameplay limit that even further. While you can pull off descent maneuvers, there's no point or there's no space. However, the speed fits the game, so it's not a negative mark, it's com absolutely a matter of preference. Ok, but let's start with the items. There are six weapons. In addition, they are not randomly placed hidden pickups like in Descent games, but they are available at very specific points during the game, during the storyline. The first one is quite boring, let's face it. It gets better, but unfortunately it never gets amazing. Interrupt weapon is quite fun. Trash weapon with a certain upgrade is a lot of fun, I have to say that. The very last one is very useful as well and has area of effect. Oh, and some weapons also have a special effects on one of your abilities, the scan. There are no secondary weapons of any description or any support items. There's a missile launcher, but it doesn't have an area of effect. And yeah, the scan I've mentioned. It works much like flares if you just press the button. Scanned enemies will have their position marked, they will get highlighted and their HP will be visible. With some, uh, with some upgrades you will also do bonus damage and take less damage from scanned enemies. There is also an Omniscan, you will have to hold down the button, wait for it to load a few seconds and then release. It will go in a sphere around you and it will reveal and mark every enemy nearby. The only pickups in the game are health canisters, ammo canisters, which you can carry up to 3 or 4 if you bought the upgrade, and collectibles, which consist of emails telling you about a plot regarding the war, some amusing spam and memory fragments that act as experience points. I've mentioned carrying canisters. Unfortunately, the game suffers from regenerating health. It's very much like a, a typical modern FPS in that regard. And you can take some damage, take cover for a while, regain health quite quickly. And what's even worse, ammunition does that too. And the reserves aren't satisfying at all. What's even far worse, that's horrible I have to say, all weapons tap into one ammunition reserve. In addition, Cloak also uses the ammo reserve, and it will burn through it in a couple of seconds. If you run out of ammo, tough luck! You can't just switch your weapon and keep fighting. No, you have to run away and get your ammo back. This prevents so many awesome moments that happened in Descent, and frankly it's frustrating. In my opinion, the fact that there are collectibles and regenerating health, as well as the very small ammunition uh, reserve, breaks up the flow of the game. It interrupts the action, it kills any sense of urgency, it's Alan Wake all over again. There's also not that much feedback on the screen as to your status. Sure, you can see health, but canisters are represented by tiny icons, and while shooting, ammo reserves are virtually impossible to see. Retrovirus features a progression system based on experience points and upgrade points. Memory fragments I mentioned earlier give you quite a few kilobytes, and every enemy you kill does so as well, except not as much. Each time you level up you get an upgrade point, which you can spend in one of three categories. Each category consists of three fields, general upgrades, which can be picked at any time, weapon mods, and an ultimate. Weapon mods change the way your weapons behave, and they can be unlocked after you find the weapon. You only get to pick one for each weapon at a time, and while this expands your arsenal to 24 choices instead of 6, most of them are very minor variations. There are also 6 ultimates in total, which you can of course pick only one at a time. You can spend your points at any time, and you can also respec at any time, anywhere. 
The upgrades change your, how you look, however, in a very, very, very minor way. There is no map. Instead, we get a guide ribbon. It's much like guidebot, except we can't shoot that motherfucker in the face for being retarded. And the guide ribbon is very much like guidebot in here. It often gets lost itself, goes through walls or in the wrong direction. And it's slow as shit. Lack of map, unfortunately, is caused by the fact that the levels are pretty much linear, an ever-glorious modern FPS addition. There are no complex mazes here, no super structures, nothing like that. It's all linear and the best we get is a corridor to the side and maybe two branching paths forming a ring. Okay, it's not that bad, but it's close. While it was similar, but frankly much better in Descent 3, here it's made worse because Retrovirus kept the claustrophobic nature of the first two Descent games. Except it's made much worse by the fact that, that there is shit everywhere! Corridors are often incredibly busy, there, there's a whole fuckload and a half of obstacles and corners and simply garbage that blocks your path, it's incredibly frustrating! Often it's so narrow, you can barely fit through. Even compared to the scent, you are quite fast, especially on your afterburner, you are very agile as well, but there are very few places where you can actually take advantage of that. This makes you feel very clumsy at the start, it halts your progress and prevents dodging enemy shots. I could rush three red hulks in Descent 1 in a room full of lava and not take a single hit, but here it's impossible. What's worse, the fact that the most game is pretty narrow corridors slash rooms with lots of shit in it basically makes the shotgun the name of the game. You're fine using it all game long, later switching to the grenade launcher, making the few other weapons feel kind of useless and very situational. In addition, the fact that there's so much shit in the way makes it nearly impossible to dodge enemy fire. You will have to be moving constantly, which is hard, and some enemies feel like they used uh, hitscan weapons. And enemy missiles are freakishly agile, they will follow you un until they hit you, even if you do the windshield dodge. This might be very well the reason for the regenerating health. However, however, with all that negativity, I have to say that the levers are very creative, they are clever and they never get boring. Yeah, they are linear, but they are not simple and end up actually being very complex. It's easy to get lost, trust me on this. Having non-linear levels is fun, but there is nothing wrong with linear levels if they are done properly. Are they in retrovirus? Yeah, they most definitely are. There are some throwbacks to the past as well. There is a train level, much like the one in Descent 3, except nowhere near as frustrating, a Dota level, or MOBA, whatever you call it, and a Sonic level. Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog. Moving on, the game features a few boss battles. However, the first one was very easy. Remember the boss fights in Descent 1 or in Descent 3? Those were fucking difficult, especially the mercenary duo in Descent 3. Here, it was a case of basic dodging. However, other fights, especially the worm fight, were quite fun. The enemy variety is decent and their design is interesting most of the time. However, not all that consistent. Having said all that, I still believe fighting feels pretty nice. The gameplay has plenty of flaws, but it's solid overall and, it, and it's still good. It's above average. It won't blow you away, especially if you are a Descent fan, but it works well and most of the flaws are pretty minor. Even with regenerating health and ammo, if you are moderately skilled, you can force the game to your own tempo and prevent interruptions, and in my opinion the biggest flaw, which is the shit in the way, only takes getting used to. And just take my advice and start playing at the highest difficulty level, otherwise it's too easy. For the purpose of this review, I played on the normal level and I only died twice, once because I got stuck and the other time because I was fighting. Okay, so what is my conclusion? Retrovirus tried to be a modernized descent. I can respect that. And it achieved that, I have to admit. It's good at what it wanted to be, but simply not great. When I was playing it, I had a 
some sort of an empty feeling at the back of my head. It has a solid gameplay, but there shouldn't have been so many Call of Duty 4 generation nonsense put into this. Like regenerating ammo and health, slower paced combat. Even with those linear levels, there's so much space and so many corners to put a fuckload of hidden ammo and item pickups, like in the sand games. Anyway, maybe I was just overhyped. Maybe I expected way too much from Retrovirus. Or rather, I expected something too different. What I wanted was a classic style revival of the sand. And I wanted this uh, consciously. Even knowing the game was advertised as a modern take on the idea from the very start of the project. That's the case, I expected something else. In all fairness, Retrovirus deserves the title of the sand successor. It didn't blow me away, but in the 6 hours and 20 minutes it took me to complete it, I've had my good share of fun. I know it's not a ringing endorsement, but this is the best 6-axis shooter we've gotten since Descent 3. So hell, give it a shot! It deserves one. If you are on a budget, wait for, for a sale. Well, that's all from me. See you in another 4 or 6 months. Peter Saber, signing out.